Oh, welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Kate Sarazen. I'm a Senior Content Director at Women Who Code and today we have Lynn Muldrow from Atlanta. Lynn, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Doing well. So Lynn, you're currently a uh, Senior Developer Educator at DigitalOcean and you're also yeah. a tech writer, an educator, and a speaker. Can you absolutely. walk us through what your career has been like so far? Sure, absolutely. I started my career actually as a software engineering hopeful um, back in 2014, 2015. I started to self-teach first, um, saw an opportunity to achieve a scholarship to a boot camp um, to further my studies. I did, I did attended General Assembly in 2015. And then from there, my career has kind of been a little bit of a whirlwind. I started as an engineer um, and worked with a number of different companies like LinkedIn. Um, after that, I moved into teaching because I had some experiences teaching with Hack the Hood and different organizations that taught children and taught um, those who are not represented in tech um, to code and found that I love both teaching and coding. So I came to this position as a senior developer educator after years of not only being an engineer myself and, and knowing the nuances and the things that we don't know that we don't know, but now I get to kind of help to, to teach right to that, to help other developers to grow and kind of come up and go from self-teaching to working for a company or things of that nature. So really, um, really cool background and, and really cool place to work and, and share my creativity and just that sort of thing. Wonderful. How was that transition from um, being a developer and then starting teaching, did you have to like learn a lot of skills? Was it uh, different than you thought it would be? What was that like for you? I personally found it to be natural. I think because very early on in my engineering career, I started to teach um, right after I got out of boot camp. my first experience was teaching. Um, and because it was integrated within my career, because I kind of understood what I needed to learn in a learning path and also then understood what students were learning, um, and what was prevalent kind of to learn within the field, um, it, it ran in tandem. So I would find myself helping peers, I would find myself um, really learning the nuances of pedagogy and sort of how to help other people to learn really complex things in not a complex manner. So um, it really did run, run in parallel and I'm really thankful for those early experiences that I had in teaching um, to get me kind of here. Awesome. And so as a, um, as a developer and then also as an educator, what has your experience been like as a woman in tech? Um, it's been challenging and it's been challenging because we are not visible. Um, it's been challenging because um, we are not what is represented in the, in the industry right now. And I think that as I've been in the industry in the five and six years that I've been in, um, there have been so many different companies sort of understanding the need of not only diversity, um, from a from a very basic level, but diversity in thought, diversity of experience, but diversity of you know skill set and that sort of thing. And I think being a woman in tech and being someone who has had personal experience, you know, um, creating content, personal experience, kind of going through life in a way that you know um, brings value to the things that I want to share to teach, um, brings value in the way that I create products that are not only things that are created for you know, a bottom line, but to help someone's actual problem in life. Like I think that we have this unique ability in tech to solve the world's problems. And I think that with different and unique experiences, we can solve more problems. We can solve the problems that are not only relevant to the bottom line, but to women and, and people of color and those who have real kind of world problems. So I think I brought that experience, my personal life experience and the things that I've experienced you know, in, in my journey in the career and kind of um, and bring it to the things that I create and share. Awesome. Um, so with that, I definitely um, can uh, empathize with how that is difficult to not see yourself represented, not to see that pipeline out there. So how has, um, has a network and a community been an important part for you? And if so, how have advocate supporters and different communities helped you professionally? Absolutely. So Women in Code has been absolutely such a resource for me from the time that I started self-teaching to this day. Um, other organizations like Lesbian School Tech has been at, at utmost importance to just kind of helping to amplify my own voice and find community within tech. Um, 
there are a number hack the hood helped me to grow and help me to learn that the things that I learned are immediately helpful for generations, you know, behind me. I think um, reaching out to organizations that align with your identity and kind of affinity um, not only helps with support, but it just helps in that you have people around you who have that listening ear, who understand where you are and how you can grow. And, and there's been very, very low points in my career that I've turned to, you know, one of these organizations or folks that I've met along the way and in my network who empathize and can provide a listening ear to a rant or something like that. So infinite importance. Um, they, all of these organizations have been within, you know, kind of my career network since I started. So. Um, all very appreciative to be a part of. And I think that's definitely something that all engineers should seek at that support system. Definitely. Um, with that, have you been in situations where you've had to overcome fear, either fear of dealing with the unknown or imposter syndrome? And if so, how have you navigated that? Absolutely. I started again my journey as a single mom um, who had no deep knowledge um, in tech, who taught myself and who was in a classroom of those who had graduated with computer science degrees and things of that nature. I'd always found myself because I was, I had such a kind of different background from those around me and my peers um, to, to kind of face that apprehension of, does she really know kind of what she's talking about? Or, <laughs> you know, because she doesn't have the background, you know, has she learned beyond bootcamp knowledge and those sorts of things. So I've always felt and seen those obstacles and kind of glass ceilings and unspoken, you know, microaggressions and, and those sorts of things, but they empower me, they don't stop me. And I know that with visibility, with, you know, perseverance and that sort of thing, um, you know, I am not only kind of helping my family and myself, but kind of paving the way for other people. So I, I have faced a lot of obstacles, you know, just in being and kind of who I am. But I think it gave me a lot of strength and it gave me a lot of um, personal mindfulness and kind of personal power to, to be able to overcome them and to show others that they could do the same. Definitely. That's great, great advice. Thank you for sharing. So as um, a mother, how has that experience been trying to navigate um, a career in tech and how has that impacted um, your career professionally? I think again, it was one of those identities that was kind of a, a backup, you know, with all the certain, the different things that we deal with um, as those who are different kind of in tech. And I think balancing motherhood and balancing a full-time career in any industry is tough. Um, I think because of the time restraints and the demanding kind of nature of, of learning a thing on the fly and implementing and that sort of thing, um, it initially felt like it took a lot of time away from my, you know, being a mother. But again, that support system, that knowing that I had friends and, and people that I've met along the way and in my networking career that could support and just listening or, or those sorts of things. Um, reorganizing my kids' school to not, not go to a brick and mortar, but to do homeschool in an impactful way has, you know, it's kind of changed our family dynamic and the, the way that they learn and stuff. And so I'm thankful, you know, although it's tough being a mom um, in, in the industry, I'm thankful for the networks of moms that I've met in tech um, who are empowered and who are really doing, you know, innovative things, you know, with their kids and building with their kids. Um, and I'm inspired by watching my kids as well, who are now, um, definitely on their path to learning to code so it's been it's been a ride but it's a fun ride awesome um speaking of inspiration is there someone in a woman in tech either historically or modern day that's inspired your career absolutely i think that um my very first inspiration is katherine johnson she has been deeply inspiring to me as a woman of color as someone who stuck by what she knew who used her skill set to, to help innovate and to change the world. I think that we all innately have the power to do that and finding our, our skill and our light and really working within that and sharing it with the world is something that I'm always inspired about. Um, there are a number, I can't even list the, the number of women in tech that I've been consistently inspired by um, who show up every day, who go to work amid all of the things that we deal with collectively and they they still show up and they still innovate and they still change the game. Um, I think Arlen Hamilton right now is, is one person that is deeply inspiring to me as well. I've watched her career kind of since the start of mine. And I'm just, 
I think that the work that she does and the visibility that she has and the things that she shares is so impactful and so powerful. And I think that she shares things that benefit the next generation. So those are two that I would say are deeply inspiring to me. Great, great choices, <laughs> both really inspiring women. Do you have any final words of advice for other women in tech? Um, I do. I think the biggest advice that I could give is to keep going, to keep going amid, you know, um, the things that are set in place to stop you, the unspoken things that may stop you, those times of imposter syndrome and those times where you don't feel like your skills are enough. Know that you are worthy, know that you are enough, and know that we deserve not only a seat at the table, but the table itself. And I think as we continue to grow and to learn and to inspire others by just being, um, there will be no need for us to kind of, you know, um, you know, make up, you know, what we need to do in terms of sorry, rambling here, um, in terms of kind of getting diversity because it'll already be a thing. I think the more that we keep going, the more we can inspire generations um, after us. So just keep going. Got this. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you so much, Lynn, for sharing your story and your advice. Your, um, advice. I think our community will really resonate with everything you said. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it.